All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, sorry for the delay and tutorials there, but I am back, and I'm going to start cracking out some more here for you the next few months. Uh, today, I want to show you this little guy here, uh, this wasp hornet critter bug. Uh, he, uh, the base mesh is actually from uh, Joseph Drust from Pixelogic. He used the Z sketch to create this, and I'll show you where to find that inside ZBrush. And we'll use that to start off with, but we will uh, take the time and we'll make some armor on the back panel and the chest here. And then we'll also add uh, displacements to everything else using uh, Greeble textures, which we will use, in, uh, which we'll be using the Greeble generator, which is in the Greeble pack. Uh, if you don't want to do use that, you can always uh, download my sample pack. So on a side note, uh, pretty cool news the other month, uh, Platinum Games is now using the Greeble generator to help with their games. Uh, they're out of Japan, uh, AAA Studio. So it's a pretty cool deal there. I'm still in contact with them. Hopefully be able to show you uh, some of the stuff they're making with it. So. Never thought after you know a year ago when I uh, released the Greeble pack that I would actually have a AAA studio uh, wanted it and wanted to use it for their games. So it's a pretty cool deal there. And yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see what the future holds. But without further ado, let's get on with the tutorial and start uh, cranking out our little Z bug here. So let's open up ZBrush. Uh, first, we're going to do. Uh, we're going to open up the Greeble generator. Let me uh, find him real quick in here. And it's the Greeble Pro Pack 1.2 and the Greeble generator 1.2. We're going to make up two different textures real fast. Let it load up here. Uh, some of you should be familiar with this. Or you can skip ahead and just use the sample packs. Either way, don't hurt my fanlands. Uh, real quick, we're going to make uh, just a quick standard tileable greeble texture real fast. So we'll open up the nano mesh here and hit in on the keyboard to see all our different uh, tiles here. We'll go to the tech panels here and we'll do a quick random seed on him. Just add some variety. See if we can find one that kind of looks interesting. They all look interesting. I may go with him. I may reduce the size just a little bit. And then we'll go over to the miscellaneous one here, which has all these little keyboards on here. Do a quick random seed on that one. And may increase the size just a little bit. Just add a little variety there. And we'll go to over to the conduits. And I will do a quick random seed on him. Do I see something that I kind of like? Uh, right around there, I think we'll do. Uh, we'll go back to the tech panels one more time here. And just give it another quick random seed. And I may increase the size just a little bit. There we go there. So, nice, quick, tileable texture. Uh, now we just got to generate it here. We have to open up our macros. Drop him over here. And we'll open up macros, the Greeble macro here. And I want to do a quick depth. Alright, that one's generated. If you're not sure where that is, it's in your textures. As you can see, it created a depth map from it. And we'll just do a quick shaded which is just a quick regular render that uses AO and shadows and all that. It takes about a minute to process, at least on my rig anyways. So I'll pause it here and then I'll get back with you when it's done. Alright, that's all finished up there. So now I can go over to my textures here and let's see, I'll click on depth real quick. I want to export and we will go to my folder here I have set up for this and demo here. I'm gonna gotta get rid of these two real quick from a failed one earlier from a failed tutorial earlier 
All right, so new folder, zero one, one just so we keep them organized here. We're going to change it to a TIFF, save, and then go to shaded, export. It's already set up as TIFF, so save. All right, now let's make a, another texture here. Close that up. Uh, actually, real quick, uh, we'll do texture off and reset. Okay. Now, what I want to do, I want to select, let's see, let's get the Panels Pro here. I'm going to hit Solo and find one that looks cool. I uh, may do... Let's see. Let me see what the first one looks like. Yeah, let's do this one here. Let's do quick edit mesh. Without moving anything, I'm going to isolate one of these. There we go. Click edit mesh. Come back out. Now I just got one side of those panels, which is cool. Let's do a Z rotation of 45. Because I'm going to try to make a uh, a diagonal tileable pattern here. So I'm going to have to scale him up quite a bit. May have to drop the tiling. There we go. Drop that down just a little bit. All right. Let's do a random seed here. Let's see what he looks like with everybody else. Uh, what we want to do is probably offset the Z. Bring him up above everybody. Slowly but surely, he'll start creeping up there. There he goes. There he goes. That's what I was looking for. want him to exist above everybody else here. And it looks a little goofy right now, so we're going to have to play with it. Maybe drop the size just a little bit. Just kind of sucks him back into the Z space. So we'll have to offset just a little bit more. All right. Do that there. Let's see. So now let's start editing our other panels here. Hit N. Let's go to the tech panels. And real quick on the sub tools on that top plate, the panels pro. Turn the little eyeball on so we get to see them now. Now with our tech panels, let's open up Nanomesh and change his rotation to 45. This way he's lining up nice and neat in there. It may increase his size just a little bit so we see him a little better. Cool. We can kind of see him peeking in and out underneath there. Let's do the same thing with miscellaneous. Just change their rotation, 45. There we go. May just offset the Z just a little bit. Okay, and random seed him just a little bit. All right, uh, let's get that conduit in here now. Let's do. Uh, oh, we gotta change the rotation real fast. Forty-five, and probably gonna have to do a Z offset there as well, so we can start seeing him. There he is. Okay, that's good. Let's, uh. Okay, I can live with that. Let's do, uh, pipes. I'm gonna switch him to, I think, the first one. We'll do hide others. Rotate them, 45. And let's do. I have to bring them up in the Z just a little bit so we can see them. Oh, too close. There we go. 
and I'm pretty content with where he sits and real quick we need to uh, go to the Greeble generator the very top one here solo want to do a frame and then another frame and that's going to reset all the shadow information in there and then we'll go back to tech panels and turn solo off and now we'll do our renders real fast so we just need a depth real fast done okay just right there and let's do a shaded give that a minute and we'll be right back to that all right that's all done now we got our shaded and our depth in there so let's go ahead and click on shaded export we're gonna make a new folder here O2 save and then depth export and we'll probably only be using the depth in these but I always like to make a shaded version too just in case I wanna use it for a cool texture later down the road so since these greebles are so quick and easy to make might as well so now what I want to do I'm gonna close up this panel here and we're gonna go ahead and do preferences initialize just so we can get back to a clean slate here there we go I usually have to do it twice just so I get my screen background correct there we go now let's go find that little model that Joseph Dress did so look under your tools by hitting the comma and that'll pull up this little uh, light box here and it's the Z sketch bug right here alright so comma and let's drag him out and what he did was this is using Z sketch which is uh, Z spheres kind of Z spheres on steroids basically uh, basically it's Z spheres on top of Z spheres okay so they they came out with this a couple years ago it's, it's kinda cool but you know it's got its limitations too so let me show you what he started with if you go into the Z sketch panel here and you click edit sketch and turn that off you can see the base mesh that he originally started with so he drew this one all out made his basic shape and then he turned on edit sketch and started sketching over the whole thing so you can even add to this right now so one thing to keep in mind be careful with is watch your draw size okay so you see this little sphere right here and you think that's how big it's going to be but when you draw it it's huge so we'll control Z that real fast and then we will what you want to do is like lower that down really small there and we'll go to like 15 to see how that does now you can draw over it and see see what happens now it's now it's a much more manageable size so let me raise him up just just a hair so let's go ahead and I don't know, we'll add some more forms to this here and you see how it just kinda wraps around itself and does some really funky things but we'll add some interesting shapes to it here and you can even smooth it and it'll blend itself to the ones below it which is kinda cool it's kind of a neat way to if you want to do uh, you know create your bones real quick and then create some musculature over it it comes in kinda handy and you can get some really neat effects to it and then uh, we'll what we'll do is we'll take uh, we'll make a unified uh, skin over it like a dynamesh basically and then we can use it to add all our displacements to it afterwards so but another cool thing with Z sketch is it's already rigged like a regular bone system would be in a different program so let me straighten him out here there we go and okay we've got symmetry on so turn off edit sketch but click show sketch and you can see it's ghosted there now click bind and now if we do a rotate we can manipulate the bones underneath everything and all that stuff on top of it will follow along so you can actually yeah you can you can make a uh, really cool poses and stuff like that before you even make your base mesh 
And I thought I had... That was kind of weird. It didn't didn't do it symmetrically. So we'll do a quick pose here real fast with this guy. Add some variety to him. Come up here, maybe adjust his antennas a little bit. So yeah, you can make one of these little Z sketches that don't take up a whole lot of memory. So and then you can manipulate manipulate it all you want. And then you can make your base mesh and start going to town from there, which I think we'll do. So yeah, I'm content with that. And then maybe curl one of these guys up here. Alrighty. Let me see. See if it's something that I'm okay. Yeah, I'm good with that. So we we'll turn off bind, go back to edit sketch, and now we can see what he looks like with a unified skin over him. Usually I'll bump that resolution up just a little bit, 256, and then I could do a preview. It'll give you a quick preview of the model, and if you turn on uh, polyfill, you can see that it's retaining the groups from all the all the Z spheres below it, which is kind of handy. So if we're happy with that, we can hit Make Unified, and then go over to our skin one here, and this is it. And now we have our poly mesh. It's not super duper clean, but we can work with that. So let's see. Let's go in here. I'm going to turn X on. And I am going to select like this back part here. And grow, 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 grow. Oops. Keep on going until I see another. There we go. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and if you do a control W, it'll make everything there the same polygroup. Just going in here and cleaning things up a little bit before we do any remeshing. So say like this guy here. Just group visible him. Group visible. Just kind of lowering the. Just kind of reducing the amount of uh, polygroups is what I'm doing. So you can go into the polygroup tab. You can merge stray groups. That'll kind of help things out. And then if you do geometry and go to Z Remesher, reduce the target down to one. And we'll keep everything else the same except for keep groups on. And you can see how it's smooth. Group is on there and Z Remesh. And we'll see what we come up with here in the end. Kind of smoothed him out way too much there. Um, let's see what I could do to fix that. Do 1.1. See if that helps a little bit. That's a little better. It's not too bad. A little clumping over there. But we can always do a deformation real fast. And polish group polish by groups just just a little bit, kind of smooth out some of these uh, rough areas like here. There we go. That's uh, probably a little bit better. There we go. Let's uh, zoom out. You can see we got a real nice uh, base base mesh here. Turn double on so we can see both sides. Looks good. Looks good. I like that. So let's see. We'll go ahead and rename him real fast. And to do to do to do rename. We'll just call him Z Bug. And then low. 
cool works good and let's go ahead and save want to make sure you save often awesome all right here we go let's see here so we've got our basic uh, low poly mesh which is great so we could actually let me shut up macro here tool go to your Z plugins real qu real quick and we could do a quick UV unwrap and the reason I liked having all those poly groups is now I can easily make a nice UV map for it so keep those two buttons on and click unwrap nothing special we have to do here and we can do a quick flatten and see hmm, not sure where that junk is coming from let me unflatten that and let's figure out where that guy came from because maybe we can uh, fix that uh, let's go to uh, go to your tool go to UV map and we do a morph UV okay so frame him we'll keep an eye on that little guy right there and see where he is from oh that's the head huh that is interesting why he's doing that so let's go ahead and do this let's go ahead and group visible him and now let's do another unwrap and see if that solved our problem so let's do a flatten yeah, yeah, here, there's the head now. Much cleaner results. Of course, I don't know where that little guy came from. So we'll have to go back and figure out where he came from. Frame him out. We'll do a quick Morph UV. And we'll follow that one part right there. Uh, maybe that's him right there. Let's see. Alright. Yeah, I think he's tucked right underneath the chin there. Let me see. Scale. Move. Yep, that's him. Alright, so what we'll do is we'll take these two and group them together. Group visible. Huh, made a nice little hole there. I don't like that. Let me do, uh. Let me do geometry, modify. And close holes. There we go. So now we can take. I want him. Now we'll group him together. Yeah, every once in a while you will get holes in your geometry, so I guess it's a good thing we found them. So let's go back, unwrap, and let's say flatten. And I don't see any stray polygons anywhere. That's good. So we have a nice successful unwrap now, and we are good to go. Cool. So let's go ahead and just save them real quick. Be on the safe side. Yes. Cool. Alrighty, so now let's get ready to move on to the next step. So let's go ahead and start setting him up for all our displacements we're fixing to do. First, we're going to turn off basic material, go into the sub tool real quick, turn the poly fill or the colorization on. So this way it'll follow us around here. We're going to go ahead and duplicate. I'm going to move him down one. I'm going to rename him, we'll just call it parts, something simple. And what I want to do before I do anything else, I want to go to geometry. And I want to start doing a divide, probably uh, one, two, three times. 
and we'll solo him or actually we don't need to solo him we just need to turn off the low res there and what I want to do is in the geometry we're gonna go ahead delete lower okay and so now he's a real dense mesh hmm probably not the way I want to do it yeah yeah that's fine I think we'll be okay here so let's go ahead and subtool and we're gonna go ahead split group split always okay there we go now he has split many a times ah uh, I know what I should have done let me uh, go back to the low let me go to delete all other okay so we're gonna start over there so we're gonna duplicate move them down rename parts okay now what I want to do is set up a different UVs so UV map go to create and PUV okay so now he has got uh, PUV tiles in there and we're gonna go ahead and do a mirror and weld and let's go ahead and turn off the previous one okay so now he will have symmetrical UVs on both sides now what you want to do is go ahead and divide him up geometry wise so we'll divide two three okay to subdivision four delete lower now go back to your sub tool and go ahead and do a group split okay and let's see turn all these on except for the low res now we should be able to get some pretty cool looking uh, displacements so let's take a look at we'll start with the body if you hold alt and click on a sub tool that will give you that particular sub tool let me zoom in on him if we go to surface we go to noise we go to UV turn on our alpha so grab that first depth there let's go ahead and turn off mix basic and let's turn on color blend to negative one now let's do uh, okay we'll up the strength we'll change the scale around a bit let's see if we can find a pattern that we like got to do some exploring here strength might be a little too high there but we'll find out here in a second when we do a preview let's do a BPR oh I know what I did edit no wonder nothing looks right flip H Ah, uh, yes, so much better. Just wonder why nothing was looking right. Okay. So now let's click OK. Come out here. Let's take a look. BPR. Pretty cool so far. Let's do. Uh, if we turn off relative, we'll get a little bit better displacement maybe we'll change the soon oh, I like that like that all right let's stick with that let's see how that looks might be too extreme of a displacement but we'll find out do a lot of fine-tuning in this first round here and yeah yeah I think I'm I think I could live with that okay so let's go back into edit let's go ahead and copy it and then click cancel now let's go to our next 
body part here. So let's go ahead and pick, uh, we'll start with all the appendages here. Let's do our, this should be our antennae. Click noise and then paste. Now we don't have to do things over and over and over again. Let's uh, move him so I can see him a little better. He might be a little too strong there, 0.25. Click OK. Yeah, he might be a pretty intense displacement, but we'll find out. And do a quick test render. Some of these thinner pieces seem to get a little more extreme displacements. Huh. That's kind of kind of nice, actually. I may I may stick with that. So I want to copy him. Cancel. Let's go to another appendage here. Noise, paste. Let's frame that sucker. There he is. And you can always change the scale to get a different look. So let's do another BPR. And it's just, yeah, it's just going to each one of these things and testing them out and seeing if it's something you like. Cool, I like that. So let's go to the next set of legs. And noise, paste. Oh, that one's going to be nice. And BPR. Uh, he's pretty cool right there. I like that. Alright, let's get these big feelers out here. Noise. Paste. I may dial back the strength just a little bit. Point two. Click OK. Do another test. Oh yeah, he looks cool. A little bit thicker than the last critter I made, but I still like it. So let's go work on our head here. And this one I want to be a little more specific with. Let me move him. Zoom in. Paste. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to try to get a type of pattern with the eyes. And this is just going to be trial and error. So I'm going to click on him so I can get fine-tuned control here. See if I can come up with something that kind of resembles eyes. It was a happy accident last time I did it. And maybe this whole panel right here could be eyes. Yeah, okay. So let's click OK. And let's see how that turns out. Scale him up just a little bit. pretty cool. Yeah, it definitely insets the eyes there a little bit, which is cool, which is kind of what I wanted. Alright, so, let's get a look out here. Let's go ahead and do that buttocks, or whatever you want to call it, abdomen, or stinger, or whatever it is. And we'll do noise. Let me... And we're going to kind of make, make sure he's got a decent pattern going on, too. Paste. So let's uh, adjust that alpha scale until we find something we really, really like. Uh, 
like that uh, nice curved following the topology there. That really, really makes a uh, makes for uh, very neat displacements there. So we just need to double check and see how far that displacement pushes, because we don't want it to get too ridiculous. And really, it's not too horrible. I kind of like that. Okay, so we've got that. So now we're going to do something a little different with the wings. So let's select our wings, Alt, and click it. I'm going to frame them up top here. This noise is going to be a little different, so we want to do the same thing. We want to align it perfectly with the camera. Frame it. Okay. Now let's pull in our other displacement that's at a diagonal. Grab our depth and turn everything off. Color blend, flip H. There we go. And now you can see it's projecting the displacement instead of just wrapping it with the UVs, which is really nice. So let's zoom in now, now that we've already set where we want it. And we're going to adjust our strength, bring him up. I may scale it up just a little. And the strength is too much right now, so we'll take it down 0.15. So let's click OK. And you'll note that it is not mirrored on both sides. And that's something we will have to do a little bit later. We'll have to do it after we uh, apply the displacements. So I just want to see how good they came out. So we're going to BPR it and see what it looks like. Not too bad. It's not bad at all. I may increase the displacement up to 0.2. Cuz I'm thinking about keeping this left side here. All right. So BPR. Take another test render here. Nice. Okay, I like that. That's going to be real nice. Okay, cool. So, let's go ahead and we're going to save him real fast. Because better save than sorry, like I always say. Well, I really don't say that, but still. So, let's go in, go ZBrush, or ZBug low, and then save as. And then save him again. This way we don't have to do all the work two or three times, which I've gotten kind of used to, but you know what I mean. All right, you could be saying to yourself, well, I could send this over to Keyshot right now. Don't do it. Trust me, do not do it. Because each one of these pieces, when it um, sends it over there, it's going to probably be about six and a half million polygons for each broken up segment that we have. So that's going to be a whole lot of polygons. I accidentally did it earlier, and it locked up the computer. I had to shut it down and start all over. So my advice, don't do it. Don't do it until after we get everything decimated down to a manageable level. And this is the time-consuming part here. But, you know, it has to be done, but it's going gonna, it's gonna, it, it's gonna to be a lot better for you down the road here. So let's go ahead and start doing what we need to do here. So we're going to go ahead and open up G 
geometry and then open up our Z plugin decimation master so let's let's go back in the order that we did this in so I'm back on the body here and I'm gonna hit solo and then what you want to do is just do a convert BPR to geo give it a minute or two to percolate there bit of a hot mess here and there but that's alright when it's all together it looks really beautiful so after that go ahead and we're gonna do this per part we're gonna decimate per part here okay it's just better that way you don't want to uh, like I said just because if you did BPR to geo to all of these you would have probably 50 to 60 million polygons and it might cripple your computer it did mine so so we're going to go ahead pre-process current and we got symmetry on so it will give it a, a bit of a symmetry I ain't going to keep the UVs or anything like that pre-process current and uh, pre-processing just depends on your computer a little bit it may take a, a minute or so so just let it do its thing it's basically calculating you know what it's like calculating every percentage of decimating the model so it doesn't have to think that hard afterwards so the pre-processing takes the the most so as you can see it's already pre-processing this one so I'm gonna go ahead and pause this and wait until it's done okay so we're done pre-processing this first one here and we will just keep the decimation at 200k just to see what it looks like and decimate current the only thing we're going to lose is the the polygon data the color data which I'm not too worried about there did a real good job there and it's only uh, hmm. that's weird so let's do hundred thousand there it goes and as you can see we didn't really lose any detail at all except for that color data but I'm not too interested in the color data for this one you can actually use and keep poly paint if you wanted to uh, it will uh, mean you'd have to have a higher higher res higher count polygon count but that's that's an option for you uh, sometimes it does hiccup on you so just be prepared so okay so we got him we got him at a hundred thousand polys so I'm happy with him we'll turn solo off we will move on to our other big piece back here solo him zoom him out let's go ahead and do uh, BPR to Geo and we're just gonna repeat this part to all these uh, pieces real fast and there he is he's all done now pre-process current uh, we will go ahead and pause this while it computes it alright we're done pre-computing that one we'll crank him up to 125,000 polys decimate current looks good all right cool now let's uh, turn solo off slowly but surely our uh, critter is coming together so to speak and we're keeping the polygon count pretty low so let's go ahead let's go ahead and work on the head click the head and BPR to geo him pretty cool and let's go ahead and do our pre-process again alright we're done with him uh, we're gonna keep him down a hundred thousand may take him a little lower let's see decimate let's see still eh, may take him to 75,000 because he is kind of a smaller part 
Turn that off. Still looks really good. Wouldn't notice any faucet in unless you got up this close to it. Cool. Turn solo off. He's slowly but surely coming together. And let's go ahead and start getting these arms. Solo. And BPR to Geo. Alright, now let's go back to pre-process. Alright, I think we're done in that one. Let's uh, let's go ahead and just decimate. And decimate current. Cool. A little dense there. And we'll take him down to 65k. Alright, looks good. Nice. Alright, so continuing on here. A couple more legs to deal with. And then we'll tackle those wings. And same thing again. Convert BPR to Geo. And let's start pre-processing. All right, we are done with that pre-process, and we'll go ahead and just decimate at that 65. Oh yeah, beautifully done. And turn him off here. Nice. All right, let's get this last leg here. And BPR to Geo. Go down and pre-process. Alright. Pre-process that one and we'll keep it at 65. Decimate current. Nice. Unsolo. And let's take a look. Nice. Oh. Still got to get the antenna. Lots of parts to go through. Lots of pre-processing. So I'm making it look fast, but it's not that fast pre-processing takes forever sometimes so here we go again BPR to Geo cool and pre-process our right, done pre-processing that last one here we'll decimate at 65k looks good alright so now we can get on to the wing right now I mean it looks fantastic all that detail and so little time so now we want to get these wings here if I can get, get the orientation correct there we go frame Let's select the wings okay solo there we go and remember how I said I wanted to keep the left side here so let me turn symmetry off and I just want to oops capture just that and then go to your geometry modify where's modify oh yeah I'm already in there delete hidden alright now we just BPR Geo this guy. Cool. And we'll go ahead and we'll decimate him first, and then we'll mirror and weld him together. And then we'll have a mirrored object. So let's go ahead, pre process for the last time. Alright, done pre processing. I'll keep it at that 65k. Just up to you and what you want to keep. So decimate current. Looks good. Kept all the detail just fine. Nice. Alright. So. Unsolo him. And all you have to do now. Since he's on the correct side. All you have to do is a mirror and weld on the X. And bam. Now you got a symmetrical wing. 
pretty cool. And that is, yeah, and that is all our underbody, and next we will go into developing the armor that goes on the outside. So, what we want to do first, before anything else, we want to get all these parts together. What is that part? That's interesting. Two little oddball parts in there. Eh, I guess we'll just delete it. It'd be alright. I think we could live without it. Alright, let's get out here. There we go. Alright, so everything is visible but the Z-Bug low. And that's just fine. What we want to do is merge, merge, visible. And now it's created one whole object with should have separate polygroups. Yep. Nice. Okay. So we're going to rename him Zbug. Hi. This will be our high poly bake that we'll use later. So we'll go ahead and just save as Zbug. Hi. Save. All right. So let's go back to our, where's he at? Go back to our Z-Bug Low, and we will go ahead and we can delete others now, since we've already, yeah, go ahead and delete others, it's fine. So now we want to work on our armor. So since we only want the armor going around the body and the uh, the butt, that's what I'm calling it. So we'll click on that one, hide, hide. There we go. And we will delete the hidden because we don't need them anymore. And then we can start working on. I'm going to rename this to Z-Bug Armor. Should have made a duplicate, but that's alright. Everything's saved, so we're good. There we go. Okay, so let's continue on here. We want to start uh, making up our armor panels here. So what we're going to do is do B, S, for our slices, we're going to do circle, slice circle. And I want to make a circle cut and probably right around there. Okay. And then I want to make a circle type cut right around there. Okay. Now I want to do a slice curve, which I got right here, hotkey. See, I want to just isolate this guy right here if he'll let me. There it goes. And I want to make a couple different cuts here. I want to get on the other side of this hole here. Same thing over here. There we go. And we just want to work with him here. So we just want to make a couple different cuts. Okay. Now, let's go ahead, we're going to, let's see, hold on, I want to make one more right here. Okay, no, I don't need that. That just looks so similar. Alright, so what we want to do, we're going to divide him up just just a little bit. 
We're going to do just a deformation, polished by groups just a little. Just kind of smooth things out a little bit. Geometry. And we want to remesh this wherever it is. Z remesher. Uh, we'll start with 5 for now. Probably going to be way too high. Yeah, still way too high. Control Z. We'll just bring it back down to the 1 like we had it earlier. Alright, so let's go 2. It's a lot of trial and error. Especially with Z remesher. Five. And it didn't keep the groups. Why not? House. Two point six. Well, there's a little bugs in here. I'm not talking about the big bug. All right, fine. Three. Z remesh. All right. So I want to get rid of this one, these two, this one, this one, this one. There we go. Get rid of all of them. We're going to delete hidden. We're going to Z remesh again. Take it down to the one. Let's go Z, 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 Z. Let's go ahead. We'll keep one of these. We do Z modeler. We're gonna delete poly loop. And oop, not that way. That way. There we go. Let's select that one. Oop. All right. So let's separate this guy from here and we'll just do a quick auto group on him to separate the two mesh meshes and poly groups oh yeah there you are auto group good there we go so we want to get rid of him this one this one that one, that one, and that one. And we'll just do a delete hidden. There we go. Now let's go ahead and we'll remesh this. Nah, shouldn't need to remesh it. A little ugly right here though. Let's uh, merge stray. Let's do geometry or deformation. Polish by groups. Okay. Now if we go to geometry and modify, we could do unweld group border. Now they're their own individual meshes. So if we try to do deformation there and do just polish by groups, as you can see, they're starting to separate which is what we want. But now we need that original mesh that I accidentally deleted so we're gonna have to load him back up and low. Okay. Let's do subtool. Let's do delete other. Okay. Now we're back to that low again. And append bug armor. There we go. 
Now let's go down to the armor. We'll turn on the low so we can see what we're doing. We'll go ahead and do a deformation. We'll start to inflate. There we go. Now we can see our armored plates there. Let's do a polish by groups there. Kind of round out the edges a bit. Inflate some more. Alright. So now we can start stylizing our panels there a little bit. I may inflate just a little bit more. Do another polish. Okay. So let's go ahead and do uh, move topology. So this way we're only touching the polygon, uh, the poly mesh islands. So we can move, say like this one, without disturbing the other one. And now here's how we get our panels to overlap. Probably should have kept that bottom plate like I did on the last one, but oh well. Just kind of wrap him around a little bit. Do a little smooth here. And I'm probably going to do another Z remesh here. We don't need to keep groups on anymore. We do half, reduce the adaptive size, maybe down to 20. And let's go to deformation. Just do a regular polish, which is a little too much. Probably just need like one. Alright, polish by features then. That's a little better. There we go. Just kind of overlap them, make them look cool. Whatever design you want to do, it's entirely up to you. I'm just trying to do what's kind of pleasing to my eye. It might be different for everybody else. So now, now that we've got our base, what we could do is go into edge loop here. Change that thickness. We'll start with a point one for now. I don't really want to polish it. Probably just leave it at a 2. 
and everything else should be fine uh, change the loops down to just two and then let's do a panel loop test it out hey and there we go and there is our armor plating that we could that we can now start displacing I make control Z regroup loops and panels and panel loop again there we go looks a lot better now and we can actually take this here and then group them together let's do that again there we go so now the inside has its own poly group and the outside has its own poly group which will make super simple Let's show you on UV Master doing the same settings as we did before now just unwrap and it should make a real nice UV Ooh, except for let's see. oh I see what I did okay let me select that again group visible there we go now unwrap flatten Oh yeah, that's much cleaner. And unflatten. There we go. Solo back. And probably do some more adjusting here. But what I want to do is actually take him and put him on top of the high poly and then do all the edit in there. Okay, so let's go ahead subtool and we'll just delete the other okay we'll go ahead and save him as the armor just so we have a copy of him so let's go back to the high and append bug armor there we go and works out pretty good I don't see it protruding really much into anything might move him back just a little bit on this guy and raise him up there we go cool I like that I don't know about you but I like it And maybe bring him back so he's not interfering with the wings so much. Let me take that first part. Jet it in. Out. Cool. Bring him up just a little. Very cool. Alright, so now we could start doing our we could start doing our uh, displacement on this guy if we wanted. Let me go ahead and yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and we'll just do PUV mirror and weld. Okay. And let's go ahead and do a, let's see, go down to our surface, noise, should be able to just paste it from previous time, yep, still there, still remembers it. But with these panels here, I don't want as much detail, so we're going to raise up the scale a bit till we see... Uh, That one might work. And yeah, maybe a little higher. Let's 
like I said I don't want as much detail here we need to do real quickly we need to do a we'll go ahead and apply a dynamic subdivision to this one since we all right do a quick BPR to see how he looks Wow, he looks cool. I like that, so I'll just increase the BPR, or the smooth subdivision. Take a look at the back side here, see how he turned out. Very cool. So We'll go ahead and subtool. We'll delete the other one. We still got it saved, so it's no big deal. So save as bug armor again. Okay, cool. Now we got his armor saved in low and high settings. So so now I can take. I can go ahead and do with this one. Go into geometry, and we'll convert BPR to geo but first we gotta since we've got a dynamic subdivision we have to apply it first so apply and then convert BPR to geo alrighty so now let's go to not UV master but decimation we'll pre-process current and let that percolate for a second Okay, so we pre-processed here. I'm probably going to make him 125,000 polys. Decimate current. And there it is. All nice and pretty. Nice and decimated down. That's good. Good, good, good. Alright, so I'm going to save as... Save as a high version. Okay, save. Alright. So, now we've got all our nice decimated pieces. We could, right now, we're going to take him into Keyshot and make a real cool render. Won't have all the colorization, but the render that we'll, we'll make will be actually pretty cool. So let me show you. So, what I want to do is get everybody back together. So let's open up, looks like armor high, armor, armor. Okay, so I need to load uh, Zbug high. Okay. And we'll go to subtool, we'll append. Do, 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 high. Cool. We will take all of him want to split, group split, okay, let's go to uh, armor high, let's see, will it do a group split, there's no groups, okay, so that's a quick easy fix, let's just do auto group, and then group split, cool, so give us a few more options inside Keyshot there, because everybody would be split up. Now, we can hit the magic uh, button that says Render and Keyshot. So we'll go Render, External Render, and Keyshot. And now we'll hit BPR. Nice thing about doing all this decimation work, it will work flawlessly inside Keyshot. Even though Keyshot can handle millions of, of polygons, the amount that I tried to make last time didn't work too well. So let me see what's going on here. Let me try to render. Let me disconnect, reconnect, BPR. Unable to connect. All right. Sometimes it hiccups. So I'll just have to open it by hand. Yeah, key shot six. Make sure I'm opening up the correct one. All 
think when I tried to uh, had my meltdown earlier it uh, lost its connection so key shot key shot and BPR there it goes now it's playing nice all right there we go now we got him in there all nice and pretty so let's go ahead I want to double click on one of these guys here and I want to create a material for it but we're going to use material graph and we're going to create a real nice ambient occlusion here so we can actually get rid of the texture that followed along which is just the material we're going to right click textures occlusion and plug that straight into the diffuse we can increase the normal and it's not bad but I think we need to add a utility to it we'll do a color adjust plug that into color and then back down to the diffuse and let's see if we can increase the intensity of that occlusion let's see hit C on there Oh yeah, that does a lot better job there. Might have to hand key that in. Now get those occluded areas looking nice and juicy. Or not really juicy, but you know what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and save this to a library real quick. So a slash o oops not question mark slash o a o save the library and we'll put it into my materials okay and now I could close him or as you can see down here it's now a named a o now I could take go back to my scene materials and you can see the materials that are assigned to each one so I could take this guy and I should be able to just drop it right up top and now everybody's got the AO material and they're all linked together so now I should be able to just modify one and the rest will follow suit and material graph there we go let's go to color adjust seems to be too extreme on some parts here there we go just modify that contrast a little bit there boom and you got yourself your little flying critter and we can always change the background or not background environment to whatever we want we can do one with a little bit of color in it let's see what this looks like and for environment we will turn the color just to a gray and let's see click OK maybe increase the contrast a little bit way too much can always change it
then you can always uh, let's see change do, 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 environment you can do ground reflection get a little ground there And then all you have to do, if you wanted, you could do a quick little turntable of this guy. If you go down, if you got the pro version, you could do animation, oh, click him, animation wizard, and just do turntable. Gives you a little preview of what it's going to do. Turntable, click ZBrush, and that's what you want to have a turntable. Next. You could do. It's going to do 360 degrees, and for 5 seconds, we can change him to 15. 15. Finish. Automatically does it for you. You can even hit play. Pause it anywhere. And get a nice little turntable of your model. Then all I have to do is just set up your render here. Options uh, for animation. Let's see, so presets 1920, 1196. It's going to vary depending on your dimensions of your monitor. It's just trying to find the closest to HD. And click over to animation, entire duration. It'll make an AVI file, and then I even have it set up to where it'll do a frame output. So, and then your documents are where you want to put them, and then just hit render. You can even do depth pass, clown pass, and all that to follow along with it. And I do like samples per frame, 50. And it, oh, it took a couple hours for me to do one. I'll show you what I did just the other day with my previous one here. Let's see, find it. And there it is. That's. I did run it through uh, After Effects real quick to get a nice vignette going on there and then add my, add all my titles and stuff like that to it. But pretty cool what you could do there with uh, just ZBrush and Keyshot. And with the length of this tutorial, I think I'm going to stop it here. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to do a second part on taking it into Substance Painter. Since uh, we've almost hit an hour and a half, and I'm sure you guys are bored, tired, and ready to do something else. So I will see you in the next video, and we will finish up this bad boy inside Substance Painter. And we will send him off to Sketchfab, okay? We'll talk to you later, all right?